Hi, I'm Richard H. Blake. I'm currently starring as Lorenzo in A Bronx Tale the Musical, and we're gonna talk about my resume today. So what I love uh, about Bronx Tale is that it's my first father role on stage, um, and being a, a, a father in real life now is uh, the best thing that's ever happened to me, so getting the chance to play a dad, and a dad that I would aspire to be, um, is, is really fun. It's that transition in life that happens, um, plus I just, I love the message of the show. It's about family, it's about you know, following your heart and, and the choices we make in this life. I was running down from my dressing room one day uh, for the courtroom scene at the end of the show, right before Gay or European, and I was feeling particularly spiteful that day, uh, so I was like bouncing down the stairs, and there's an overhang, uh, it's like a cement overhang, and I was like just like jumping down from flight to flight, and I literally jumped, smacked into the concrete overhang. So I smacked my head hard, and I was like, oh! But then I continued to go on, go down, and I was like, oh, wow, and I got on stage, and we're in the, uh, in the behind the desk, and it comes rolling on, and I turn over, and I look over at Kate Schindel, and, and she looks at me, and she's like, she's just like blood, just like starts stripping down my face. Um, don't jump downstairs, kids. It's not safe. One night, um, in the second act, I come running on with the gun, and I'm like, oh, you know, who goes there, whatever, blah, blah. And as I run on and I like land, the power blows. Like, rent power blows. And come to find out, there was a fire a couple of blocks away, and it blew up uh, a transformer. I, it, it knocked out the power for like eight city blocks. And so we waited, and it was like a, a good 20, 25 minutes uh, before they, they realized they weren't gonna get the power back. So instead of just ending the experience there, they decided they were gonna roll out a piano on stage and have Alphaba and Glinda sing for good for the audience, just with a piano, no mics, we had no power, this and that, and all the crew got flashlights and came on stage and stood there and lit them with flashlights. And we were done, so we got changed, and we, would, and we all went out to the audience and watched it, and this is a huge, massive theater, and everyone held up their phones to light up the theater uh, in the audience, and it was so quiet that in this massive theater with no amplification, you could hear Alphaba and Glinda crystal clear. It was so powerful, and it was such a, I think, an amazing evening, uh, for the audience and such a cool sort of experience. Tommy DeVito is one of my favorite roles I've played to date. Um, but when you forget lines as Tommy DeVito, uh, and I'm not saying that that happens, but it may, um, it's, it, it's, a, it's a tough thing because Tommy DeVito doesn't really do anything but talk the whole show. Um, so if you drop some things here and there, um, you kind of mess up the rest of the cast and they all just sort of look at you like, uh, where are we supposed to go with that dude? One of the great things about that show is I got to dance and sing, you know, it was one of like the last dance shows I did, uh, or have done, um, and, uh, had big kicks in it, kicks that I could not do anymore. Um, but back then I could kick my face. It was fun. Um, until you rip your pants when you kick your face. And then you gotta turn up, you know, upstage with your butt facing the audience. But your pants from where your belt loop starts all the way down to about the middle of your thigh is completely open. You have to reevaluate the choreography. It was my first uh, walk into Shakespeare. Um, and I got to get stabbed in the back every night with a real knife. So that was cool. You're like, how did that happen? I had this back plate that they built. Uh, they plastered my back and built this plate with this huge piece of foam on it, like this thick, because they used a real knife when I died. And in the fight scene, in the scene, they literally would take a knife and stick it in my back. And then I crawled to my mom with the knife sticking out of my back. I mean, that was kind of cool. We lasted five shows, five performances. Uh, I, 
but I am still the youngest person to have their name above the title in a Broadway show because of it, so thank you for that. And at the time, I was offered the uh, opportunity to be on the Mickey Mouse Club when the show, when Princess Park was coming to Broadway. And I, they flew me down to Florida. I had to, you know, uh, meet with Michael Eisner, who was the head of Disney at the time, and had this, you know, great contract offered to me and all this. And so he got done, and my dad turned to me and he goes, so what do you want to do? And I said, I want to do the Broadway show. And he was like, really? So I did this Broadway show that uh, really was one of the best experiences of my life, even though it was, it, it was a huge flop. Um, you have to have those. You want to, you know, I mean, that's a full career when you've had those. You learn so much from those experiences and, and so much about this business from those experiences. And, you know, they replaced me on the Mickey Mouse Club when they had to find people with a couple of guys named Justin Timberlake and Ryan Gosling. So everybody wins. So when I first started in Rent, I was, uh, I was covering Mark and Roger. I'm on stage. Uh, I'm Roger, I'm sitting on the table um, waiting for Out Tonight to start. And I'm facing uh, stage right. So I'm facing stage right, can't see anything else. Literally sitting in against style, this and that. Out Tonight starts. Uh, a girl it, who was on for Mimi that day, when she went to do one of the moves, you know, she fell over the railing and was literally hanging on by like her toes. Like she hooked like her, like foot around it, like a, like a circus performer. Um, the audience is gasping, people are running. I start to see people, I have no idea what's going on, right? Because she never missed a beat. Um, Erica Nunez, that's her name. Um, and uh, she was amazing that she did not fall, thankfully. Um, she ended up pulling herself back up, but literally people were running down the aisles like they were gonna run up and catch her. And I'm just sitting there like this because I had no idea. She comes in, find out later uh, that, that she almost plunged like 30 feet to her death. Um, and I'm really glad that didn't happen. Hey, so those are some stories from my resume. Come check me out in the Bronx Taylor Musical at the Long Acre Theater.